Is there an overlap between work and worship? Is there any kind of way that there's a connection between my job and Jesus? Well, we'll talk about this. Your faith in the workplace and your belief system in your day-to-day -day life on this edition of the Alex McFarland Program. Stay tuned. Should we view our work, our responsibilities, our job, even our home life as if we're doing it for God and with God watching? Absolutely. Hi, Alex McFarland. Welcome to the program. We're going to talk about work and worship. And uh, as we talk about bringing our faith into our day-to-day -day lives and responsibilities, Hey, I want to share a story. Early in the life of this ministry, we needed a photograph taken. And I really don't like to get my picture taken, but got to do it sometimes. So in my hometown of Greensburg, North Carolina, I went to this photography shop and got some pictures done and some promo items for the ministry. And the, the guy that ran the photo shop and took the pictures was a Christian. We talked about that. And then about a month later, uh, after we had done this photo shoot, we had a poster for one of our big events at a local arena. And I said, hey, we're doing this youth event. Would you put this picture in your window? He said, oh, well, Alex, you know, I don't mix my job and religion. That's what he said. And, and I said, really? And uh, he said, look, uh, I know you're a minister. You're doing all this youth work. But this is my job. Church is on Sunday. I don't mix my job and my religion, so I'm not going to put the poster up. And I'm thinking, okay, what do I say here? So as I'm writing this check, uh, I gave it to him, and, and the photo shoot was not cheap, really. And um, he said, okay, thanks. And I said, hey, by the way, I just played a little trick on him. I said, um, good luck trying to cash that check because I'm going to stop payment on it. He said, what? And I said, look, per your instructions, I'm not going to mix my religion into this business transaction. My, my Lord says, be honest, pay your bills, make good on your commitments. But you have said, let's keep religion out of this. So I gave you a check, but we're not going to involve Christian values in this. So I'll cancel the check. He looked at me, he said, give me the poster. I'll put the poster up. And my point is this. In our work, in our business transactions, it's impossible to extricate values. There is a worldview present in everything we do, really. And the Bible says whatever we do, we do it as unto the Lord and not unto men. Now, when I think about work and calling, I mean, if you, you think about a preacher in a pulpit, they say so-and-so was called to the ministry. But do you know if you're called to business, if you're called to medicine, if you're called to teach or be an educator, if you're called to be in government or politics or the legal field as our guest that you'll meet in just a few minutes, when you're doing what you're gifted to do, you've got an anointing. The biblical word for a gift is anointing that God supernaturally equips you to do what you do, do you know that's every bit as sacred as a preacher in a pulpit? I thank God for, for CPAs. I thank God for accountants. Yesterday I was at the dentist and my, my dentist, he said, you know, ever since I was a little boy, I felt called to be a dentist. I said, well, I thank the Lord that that's your calling. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't do it to be up in people's mouth every day. But isn't it a blessing that everybody has a calling from God. And what a blessing for everyone involved when people live out their calling. Do you know you have a calling from God? You really do. You're here for a reason and for a purpose. When we come back, we're going to talk about bringing your faith into the things that you do in your home life, in your business and job, in the workplace. We'll visit with somebody who is living out her calling when we return 
and we'll talk and drill down into the topic of how we find our calling and we live out our purpose that was given to us by God. Stay tuned. We're back after this. Have you ever wanted to raise your hand during a sermon? Well, here's your chance. Hi, Alex McFarland here from the nationally syndicated radio program, Exploring the Word. For more than 10 years, my co-host, Bert Harper, and I have taught scripture and answered hundreds of Bible questions. We've compiled a brand new book of the top 100 Bible questions from listeners of all ages, from questions about supposed Bible contradictions to apologetics facts that prove the truths of Scripture. This new book features practical content that will make the Bible come alive for you. Can we really be sure that God exists? Are there contradictions in the Bible? I need a book that will help me understand the Bible better. There is so much good content in this book. 100 Bible Questions and Answers, published by Broad Street Publishers and available online at your local bookstores and also through afastore.net. Welcome back to the program. You know, regarding the subject of bringing your faith into the workplace and being mindful of the fact that the things we do in our day-to-day life really have eternal implications. There's no guest that I would rather have on to speak about this subject than the person you're about to meet. Janet Ward Black is really uh, a leader in North Carolina and throughout our nation. She's an attorney. She is a business strategist. She's a very innovative thinker and leader. But first and foremost, she's a follower of Christ, and she is our guest right now on the program. Janet Ward Black, thank you so much for making time to be with us on the program today. It's my honor. Thank you for asking. Well, it's it's great to have you. And I want to talk about business, mm. the the faith that we have in the marketplace. But first, a little little bit of your story. Tell us how the Lord brought you to where you are in your life's journey. So I grew up in a small town, Kannapolis, North Carolina. I knew what I wanted to be from the time I was five. I wanted to be a doctor. And I had all these science awards. I had a chemistry scholarship to college. And then I hit organic chemistry my freshman year and figured out that I was not going to be a doctor (laughs) unless things changed. My dad had always said, I want you to have a job where you don't have to ask people for a job. I said, hmm, wonder who, what I could be. Oh, a lawyer. I think I'll be a lawyer. And unfortunately, that was the intellectual acumen with which I made that decision. But what's amazing is it was God's plan all along. Mm -hmm. And so now I can't imagine doing anything else. Isn't that something? Um, God does have a plan, doesn't he? Yes, he does. I I love whenever we're doing events with young people, which is very, very frequently, uh, to see almost the relief that comes over their face when they realize that God has a plan. Yes. And we don't have to figure out all the answers when we let the Lord lead us, do we? Not at all. Not at all. And, you know, he talks about um, a lamp into my feet. It's not a flashlight to look into the future. Mm-hmm. It's just one step at a time that he's showing us the way one step at a time. That is brilliant. That That is brilliant. Uh, I like what you're saying there. How did God... Um, guide you over the years? What have been some of the the milestones at which you were very cognizant that God was leading you? So during law school, I said, there's one thing I never want to do. I never want to be a trial lawyer and speak in public. Well, I'm a trial lawyer and I speak in public. So that path changed. He changed it for me. And I had to learn sort of on the fly to be mm-hmm. able to do that. So that was one of the milestones. The other thing was I never planned to own my own business. I always thought I would work for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And then I had uh, a split in a partnership, law partnership, Mm -hmm. 17 years ago. And all of a sudden, I ended up uh, with a building, with a bunch of employees, with all of the cases. And I had to figure out how to be an entrepreneur. And I now realize that that was part of the big plan as well, because within less than 12 months from the time the firm split, um, the president of the Bar Association, the North Carolina Bar Association, came and said, we've chosen you to be the next president of the North Carolina Bar Association. And I'm absolutely convinced that the Lord made it so I had to be in control of my law firm Mm -hmm. to be able to walk out what he wanted me to do as president of the Bar Association. And he gave me some words about that. And that's another part of the story. Well, I would love to hear that. You know, parenthetically, let me let me say this. 
Um, I, in our travels all over America, I've met so many dozens, maybe hundreds of attorneys that are devout Christians that love the Lord and actually see their, their legal work as a form of ministry. Absolutely. There are a lot of godly people in the, the field of law. And there should be. Justice is God's idea. The concept of seeking justice, He created it. He made it so even from the time we're a little child, we know when something's unfair. Mm -hmm. So what lawyers generally do is to try to make sure that fairness is equal on both sides, mm -hmm. that the little guy gets a fighting chance. And, and that righteousness prevails. Absolutely, and hopefully the right decision as well. Do you know, I, I've said this many times, uh, Janet Ward, it's a legal universe. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, even in the gospel, there are legal principles. Um, in Romans 4, it says that when we trust Christ, His righteousness is imputed to us. Yes. That believers in the eyes of God are declared righteous, yes. which that, that's really a legal precept. And I tell people that, you know, before we have the righteousness of Christ, we have the unrighteousness of Adam and Eve yes. imputed to yes. us. Yes. So um, if you would speak to the fact that, you know, in the eyes of the Lord, um, it's a universe by laws and legal, legal implications. Yes. There's so much in the Old Testament and the New Testament where you're asked to speak out for those who can't speak out for themselves. And that's really what we do as lawyers. Not all lawyers do. There's some that do real estate transactions and wills and estates. Mm -hmm. uh, we fortunately get to speak for people who are often the underdogs and can't speak. You know, there's so much in Deuteronomy that talks about fighting for the orphan and the mm -hmm. widow, making sure that they're supplied for, to make sure that justice is fairly meted out, mm -hmm. irrespective of somebody's financial position or power position for that matter. Sure, sure. Well. Um, Let's talk for a moment about vocation. Mm -hmm. um, work is not the curse. You know, in Genesis 3, there was the fall, and God told Adam and Eve, you know, by the sweat of your brow, you'll till the ground and put food on the table. Um, I actually think work is a great blessing. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes the struggle, the futility of it is part of the curse. But um, is, is our vocation really a, an act of worship? Without a question. The more I think we can integrate our Sunday selves into our Monday through Friday selves, the more um, I think God is honored by that. Mm. I once heard somebody say that there was a pagoda that somebody was pulling together using um, pieces of wood, and underneath the edge of the pagoda it said, our work is our worship. Mm. And that's what I try to feel about my work and how I help lead our company is can you make it where the joy of the Lord is a part of what you're doing? And sometimes the decisions you have to make in the business context is not what's in your financial best interest. It actually may not even be in your personal best interest because it, it requires more work and more effort on somebody else's part. But I think the more we say, can the godly principles be integrated into our vocation, that the God, that God of the universe smiles. Mm. And, and this is applicable in any vocation, isn't yes, it? Absolutely. You know, I, I think the average person, if you're talking about a, a pastor or a minister, of course they see how that's the work of God. But um, business, law, education, medicine, I mean, any career path that a young person or anybody would uh, take after, I mean, we, we are to take our biblical view and values into that, aren't we? Yes, and, and the Lord didn't make it where everybody was supposed to be a preacher. Thank, you know, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's assume even maybe less than 1%. Yeah. That means that God's plan for the world was for some of us to be business leaders, some of us to work in business, that that's part, that's still our calling. Mm -hmm. And what I tell young people is, if you're not in a vocation that makes your heart sing, it's time to, to move. Because mm. you want to get into the place where you feel, um, as the fellow in Chariots of Fire said, do you feel God's pleasure in yes. what you're doing? Oh, amen. That, that is so good. Because, you know, the, um, the old saying, do something you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. Absolutely. Um, we, we talk with a lot of young people and we do a lot of interviews in, in planning our books and our uh, curriculum and our events. Uh, Janet Ward, I guess if there's one question teens and even 20-somethings yeah. ask me repeatedly, 
how may I know God's will for my life? Mm. How do you answer that? If somebody were to ask you, how may I find my niche, mm. God's roadmap for me? Uh, how do you answer that? Well, a couple of things come to mind. Um, I heard Joyce Meyer say one time that she often clearly hears the voice of God and she changes her path for that. But then there are long periods of time where she doesn't hear the audible voice of God. And so that she knows you just keep doing what you're doing until God corrects you or tells you you need to go into a different direction. So that's one of the things that comes to mind. So uh, for people that are small business owners, mm -hmm. um, but they've never really thought of it as um, a worship offering for God mm -hmm. or necessarily weaving biblical precepts into their business, uh, like you with the Ward Black Law Firm, I mean, um, it's one of North Carolina's great law firms, but you're doing it for, for Christ. What counsel would you give to business owners across America that maybe they need to begin to see it as a work for the Lord? Well, one of the great things that happened to me was that I found C12 17 years ago. Okay. So C12 is a national organization of Christian business owners and Christian presidents of companies. And what's particularly helpful for that, we meet in groups of 12, one full day a month, and we focus on making our businesses better businesses, but make our businesses better ministries. Mm. And I think if you're not in relationship with people to push you, to question why you do things. So for me to get to hear other ideas from other Christian business owners about how they're serving the Lord better has helped me make a little bit of progress, then hopefully we're doing some things that other people uh, are copying as well. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you this. This is great. C12, uh, first of all, your, your business or C12, uh, give us some websites. Where may people find you online? Ah, well, so our, for our business, it's wordblacklaw.com. It's mm -hmm. even got information about my testimony on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think it's c12forum.org mm -hmm. for C12. And people can find out, identify if you own a business. Uh, you can put your zip code in and they'll identify what groups might be in your area. But there mm -hmm. are o over 2,000 in the United States that are members of C12. Really? And isn't that a great encouragement to know yeah. that there are people who are forcefully trying to advance the kingdom through their business. Yeah, and and I, I think it would be a great encouragement for a lot of business owners to know that they're not alone. Yes. Uh, just like Elijah uh, felt like, oh, I'm, I'm the last one. And God says, no, there are more than 5,000 mm -hmm. that have not bowed the knee to Baal. There are a lot of very gifted business people that love the Lord. And I, I think it, it's powerful when they know each other yes. and it's encouraging. Yes, and, and even though all of us are in different kinds of businesses, every group of 12, you have to not be in the same occupation. Mm -hmm. And I thought originally, well, what am I gonna learn from somebody who has an architecture firm or somebody who has a, 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 a computer business? But the truth is all of us trying to figure out how to run better businesses. We just sell different products. I happen mm -hmm. to sell legal services, mm -hmm. but all of us are trying to figure out how do you walk out your faith inside of your business? The people that are entrusted to you, your employees, how do you make sure that when you get to heaven, you get the well done, good and faithful servant? And that takes intentional attitude. It takes effort to be able to figure out how can I best serve the Lord's people, not just my clients, but the people for whom uh, that work for me. And isn't it a blessing when, when uh, you succeed, and I'm just gonna say, when you prosper, mm. the Lord has more for each of us than we even dreamed for ourselves, doesn't he? Absolutely, yeah. blessed beyond measure. And it may not be money, but yeah. uh, the, the stories we get to hear at work, the opportunities that we get uh, to see with the calling of other people and how we can invest in that is one of the great blessings of, I think, our lives in the business. Even if we have people who are not Christians, who are people of a different faith, um, I think they see the incredible reward in what we're doing there. When, when you have prepared and worked, you've invested hours, and then when you, when you win a case, mm -hmm. uh, what does that feel like? Well, it's a wonderful thing, mm -hmm. especially if it's the right decision. Sure. And as counselors at law, we're trying to help people just make wise decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things that's a little unique about what we do at the firm is we do donate 10% of all of our revenue uh, to nonprofits in our area. And we have been doing that for 10 years now. 
-hmm. So that allows some of the money that comes into the firm, not just to pay for the lights and for the employees, but rather to do good works in our community locally, nationally, and globally. So it's bigger than just that one case. The, the greatest legal rendering in history, uh, Calvary's cross, mm -hmm. where our guilt was put on Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes. As an attorney, and you understand uh, cases, decisions, what, what does that mean to you that in a, in a legal sense, mm -hmm. Almighty God says, forgiven right. because my son paid the price. What, what does that mean to you? Well, ironically, how we started tithing on our gross revenue was when God spoke to me and said, I am a substitutionary God. And I'm like, I don't know what that means, but I guess I better go figure it out. And what I concluded was, yes, in fact, he is a God of substitution. In the Old Testament, we hear about crops and animals that were sacrificed for the sins of others. Obviously, Jesus in the New Testament is the ultimate substitution. So that is saying, I'm willing to take your sins onto me what an incredible loving God to be able to say, I'm willing to take what you owe and stand in the gap to be substituted for who you are. So how in this world do we then become substitutionary for the people that we are trying to help? Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. uh, Janet Ward Black, I wanna say thank you for being with us on the show today, but more importantly, thank you for doing uh, what you do for the kingdom of God. My pleasure. God bless you. folks. God has a plan for every life, and God has a plan for you, and God loves you, Christ died for you. Jesus, we always say this, Jesus is as close by as a prayer. Call on him today. Stay tuned, we're gonna come right back after this brief break, stay with us. This is John, he's 21. He's never met Jesus, it's possible he never will. He never went to church, his mom doesn't trust them. How do you change his future? So let's find his public school and establish a Bible club down the hall. There, someone introduces him to Jesus, who takes his life in a new direction. John's so excited, he tells his friends, one of them comes to Christ. And it all began in a public school good news club. Faith, Christianity, in the workplace, in the home place, and in the heart. Well, Abraham Kuyper was a famous theologian. He was the prime minister of the Netherlands in the early 20th century. He lived 1837 to 1920. Abraham Kuyper famously said, any direction you look, everywhere, every square inch of the entire universe, God can legitimately say, mine. He created, everything belongs to him. We belong to him. The question is, are we going to yield our heart, our mind, our behavior, our will to God? And speaking of all being under the sovereignty of God, including our work, our, our life, there's no silo. You know, we have Christianity over here, but in this container, we have the rest of life. No, it all needs to be for God and under God. There is the concept by Lance Wallnow, maybe you've heard of Lance Wallnow, a speaker, and uh, we teach this at Karis Bible College, that all through our life, uh, wherever we land vocationally, there is the home, the church, the classroom, the media, the marketplace, the judiciary, the arts, the sciences. Look, we're all part of a family. I hope you're in church. But then your vocation, maybe it's the classroom, education, Maybe it's the marketplace or business. Maybe it's law, politics, medicine, the arts, whatever, or yes, ministry. Go into your vocation understanding that it really does count uh, before a holy God. The things you do in time matter for eternity, and that will revolutionize your work. You know, uh, when you understand that I'm doing this for God, and God has gifted me in this regard. I can work this job. I can make a contribution and earn a living, put food on the table, pay the bills. Uh, it's all, all part of this divine equation of which we're a part. I'm a preacher. Maybe you're doing something different. 
But may God bless you and may each of us understand our gifting, our calling, our choice to serve God and do it as unto the Lord. It will change everything. So let's take our faith everywhere we go. The reason you want to come to Karis is because of the community and fellowship you get from everybody you're around. They focus on their relationship with God, which makes all their relationships here so powerful and just easy. And it is so cool because you can connect with anybody here. It's to disciple people, it's to see people grow. And you don't find it everywhere, but you will find it here. These are exciting days at Alex McFarland Ministries. We are growing, and I want to say a big thank you, number one, to God himself for providing and raising up this ministry, but to all of you that pray and financially support and you send in tax-deductible contributions that enable us to preach the gospel, broadcast, host events. And by the way, this is our event preparation manual. When uh, we put on conferences and we organize prayer teams, we organize promotional teams, volunteers, and really it engages churches and whole communities of churches. And the move of God is so tangible when Christians work together. If you would be interested in us doing an event in your city, we would love to talk to you. And we might spend six months preparing. We might spend a year. But what we will do, we will partner with the churches and the leaders in your city to create a movement that will honor God and bring people to Christ. If you want our event preparation manual, just write to us. You can go on my website, which is alexmcfarland.com, and you can email us uh, if you'd like to talk about doing an event. And speaking of events, we've got a major national conference coming up in Paris, Tennessee, April 21 through 23. The theme is Truth matters, confronting the issues that will shape our future. This is our newest newsletter, which also talks about not only the Tennessee event, but our camp, seven youth camps this summer. The website for the camps, by the way, is equipretreat.org. That's equipretreat.org. And by the way, folks, do you know that $85 will sponsor a child's day at camp? We'll have more than 1,200 teens at our camps this summer. And if you would be so kind as to please give your best financial gift to help us talk to kids about God and country. We're trying to woke-proof America's teens. Would you help us do that? Send a donation, please. You can give securely online at alexmcfarland.com alexmcfarland.com, or mail a check to P.O. Box 485, Pleasant Garden, North Carolina, 27313. Please pray, please give, and together we will change our nation and world. Let us hear from you today.